Good afternoon, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. Now, I want to start off with the story that I just posted on the blog. Uh, Bitcoin price rises as supply squeeze at Mt. Gox intensifies. Go ahead and read that story. Uh, what we're seeing on the Mt. Gox exchange is Bitcoin's draining off the exchange. Now, we've covered in the past the no total number of Bitcoins offered and the total number of Bitcoins bid. If you remember in the past, I was looking at that key 100,000 mark on the offer. You can see now that we barely even have 100,000 left on the exchange. So when we get to this key 200 price here, we only have about 63,000 Bitcoins offered. And for the bid at 75, we have about 105,000. So to get to that 65, we're all the way up to 95. So we're seeing a price rise in the Bitcoin in US dollars. And that's going to be the key to this report is what Bitcoin prices are doing in various currencies. Because if I'm correct, we may be seeing the beginning of a disconnect with the US dollar price of Bitcoin and potentially a Bitcoin dollar devaluation. Now, that's a, a little bit uh, deep of a topic, but I want to start off by showing you the net Dania chart of the dollar versus the Chinese yuan. Now, this has been in a steady decline since the beginning. Let's pull out to the weekly. Since before the beginning of the financial crisis, you can see that Chinese yuan were about 8.3 to 1 to the dollar. We're now getting down to about 6. So that's coming close to a 25% decline in the value of the dollar against the Chinese currency since the beginnings of the financial crises. You can see that in the midst of the financial crisis, we stabilized and then we started down again. We're on another very strong down leg. Now, the reason why that's important First of all, let's go to the BBC News and cover the story on the Liberty Reserve. Now, this is going to be connected. If you remember, we had the DHS seizure of the Mt. Gox Douala account, and now we have the seizure of the Liberty Reserve. I'll read a little bit of this. Liberty Reserve Digital Money Service forced offline. Liberty Reserve, a Costa Rican-based digital currency service has been shut down after the reported arrest of its founder. Authorities in the Central American country said Arthur Budovsky had been taken into custody in Spain on suspicion of money laundering following an investigation which also involved the U.S. They added that police had raided several of Mr. Budovsky's properties and seized his computer servers. The site went offline on Thursday. Liberty Reserve has described itself as being the Internet's oldest, safest, and most popular payment processor, serving millions all around the world. It had allowed users to open accounts and transfer money, only requiring them to provide a name, date of birth, and email address. Cash could be put into the service using a credit card, bank wire, postal money order, or other money transfer service. It was then converted into one of the firm's own currencies, mirroring either the euro or the U.S. dollar, at which point it could be transferred to another account holder who could then extract the funds. The service promised that payment transfers were instantaneous and it charged a maximum of $2.99 for each transaction. It also offered a private messaging facility, which it said was, quote, much more private and secure than email or instant messenger services, end quote. Security expert Brian Krebs said Liberty Reserve's features made it popular among cyber criminals who wanted to move funds and make payments anonymously. However, others said they had used the service for legitimate means, viewing it as a cheaper alternative to PayPal. They fear they will now lose money still sitting in its accounts. And it goes on. I'll link the story and you can read it. So we're beginning to see a crackdown coming out of the U.S. primarily against virtual currencies as well as these money transmitters. Now, I don't know what the relationship is between the Costa Rican authorities and the American authorities and the Spanish police, etc. 
but uh, this is a continuing effort by the United States to crack down on our, in my opinion, crack down on alternatives to the U.S. dollar. It's also my opinion that this will fail, and I'm going to try to prove that to you here now. So let's start off by going over to BitcoinCharts.com. This is exchange volume distribution of the Bitcoin. One is by market and the other one is by currency. So you can see that as far as the market is concerned, Mt. Gox has the majority of the transactions more than all of the other exchanges combined. Uh, you can see that Bitstamp has 9% and BTC USD has 8%. BTCN Chinese Yuan has 5%. That would be very interesting to see how these have changed over time. I don't have that data, but my guess is that the Mt. Gox US dollar percentage is shrinking. Now, as far as the currency is concerned, it's even more skewed towards the US dollar with 83% of the exchange for Bitcoins being done in US dollars. The Chinese currency is only 5% and the Euro is only 7%. So what does this mean? Well, it means that the vast majority of transactions are still in US dollar, but I believe that that is going to shrink. Now, the US has been involved with not just the uh, attempts to regulate the cryptocurrencies and uh, shutting down of Liberty Reserve, etc. But uh, anybody who's studied the issue knows that the US has been very involved in strong arming foreign banks forcing compliance with US rules uh, so much to an extent that many many banks overseas no longer allow accounts to be opened by US customers so we've already seen increasing isolation of the US citizens and hence US dollar transactions in foreign jurisdictions because of the attempt by US authorities to force all other uh, entities in the world, foreign banks and countries, to comply with our regulations. Now, I think that the Bitcoin may be the first example of how this is going to backfire. So let's look at the charts from BitcoinCharts.com of the Bitcoin quoted in US dollars and the Bitcoin quoted in Chinese Yuan. So this first chart here, this is the Mt. Gox US dollar chart and there are a ton of charts that you can go to. If you go to price chart and click the drop down, you can see that there are enormous numbers of charts uh, that you can look at exchanges, tons of exchanges, but again, the volume on these exchanges is very, very tiny, but they're definitely there. So uh, as the trade in Mt. Gox decreases, the others are going to increase. And I believe as the trade in U.S. dollar decreases, the others are going to increase. Now, you also have to remember that the percentage of U.S. dollars held overseas as foreign exchange reserves are disproportionately high compared to other currencies. I think only the euro is uh, even has a representative amount. The other currencies don't really even matter. Most of foreign exchange reserves are held in gold, dollars, or some euro. So the US dollar is the primary player. And uh, even with Mt. Gox's link to Dwala being shut down, the ability to get money onto the exchange, that doesn't mean that uh, dollars still can't flow onto that exchange from other places. So back to this chart, this is the Mt. Gox price in US dollars. And you can see I've drawn this line here from the pre-breakout spike at that 150 price where we had the blow off top all the way to 265. And I've drawn a line there that we're coming back to as the shortage of Bitcoins on Mt. Gox intensifies. Now this next chart, this is a chart of the Bitcoin in the Chinese Yuan. The one thing that really stands out is that the price in Yuan is still in a downtrend, whereas the price in dollars is a stronger uptrend. So 
there isn't a huge significance in the difference between these charts and you have to also adjust for these dates here because uh, the US dollar chart goes back to uh, September of 2010 and uh, the Chinese chart goes back to July 2011. Nevertheless, you can see there is a difference in these charts and what I'm proposing is that as the United States begins to become more and more restrictive on the ability of its citizens to invest in Bitcoin uh, by shuttering different exchanges or pathways of getting money into the cryptocurrency, then as long as the foreign jurisdictions, and of course the big wild cards are going to be the Russians and the Chinese who already have a fairly large representation in the Bitcoin community, certainly not currency-wise, but interest-wise, very, very large. So as the U.S. begins and continues to crack down on the ability of its citizens to get their money into Bitcoin, what we may be looking at is a U.S. dollar Bitcoin devaluation. What that means is that the price of Bitcoin could continue to rise against the US dollar whereas it stays flat or falls or rises just very very slowly against other currencies. Now the result of this is going to be an increasing isolation of US citizens from the Bitcoin market and of course uh, their dollars being worth less and less and less in terms of Bitcoin whereas foreigners their currencies will be worth more and more and more in terms of Bitcoin and uh, therefore for them Bitcoins will be more valuable in what they can buy. So a very interesting development. Now I think that this is a direct result of potential overreach by US authorities because you have to remember that the Bitcoin market is a free market. It's a market that's going to respond to these attempts to regulate it Again, the Bitcoin itself cannot be regulated. The only thing that can be regulated is the exchange of Bitcoin into existing currencies. And that's what the U.S. is attempting to do. Now, I haven't seen similar attempts by Euro authorities and similar attempts by Russian authorities. And I don't know of any attempts by Chinese authorities. The last information I had coming out of China was very, very positive for the Bitcoin, actually positive coverage from state-run media. So if that's the case, that we are seeing the beginning stages of a US dollar Bitcoin devaluation, then what that means is the trade in Bitcoins and dollars is going to become more and more irrelevant. The Bitcoin exchanges that trade primarily in US dollars are going to become more and more irrelevant. And the Bitcoin exchanges that trade in foreign currencies for Bitcoin, those are going to become more and more important as the importance of the US dollar in terms of Bitcoin trade decreases. Now, as to the question of how this can feed back into Forex flows, I don't think that the size of the market is even possible, it can even have a possible impact on the Forex market. Although it is theoretically possible that at some point in the future there could actually be a feedback loop from Bitcoin back into the currencies and the Bitcoin could actually be a mechanism whereby the US dollar begins to be devalued. We've already seen that with the Chinese Yuan. Uh, we know that the US dollar chart, which is a basket based upon the other currencies that mostly are controlled by policy coming out of Washington. We're talking the Euro and the Yen. Washington exerting influence on these other countries to continue devaluation of their currencies, which has caused the United States dollar to relatively strengthen in the short term and stabilize in the long term. But again, the chart of the US dollar against the Chinese Yuan has not strengthened and that is a currency that Washington doesn't have a lot of influence over. So with those types of things happening, uh, the, the Chinese currency strengthening against the dollar, the Bitcoin strengthening against the dollar, we may be looking at a backdoor devaluation of the US dollar by a Bitcoin. And we'll talk to you next time.